What's up, YouTube? Welcome back to Breaking Truckers. That's all of a sudden at age, what, 60? He's just going to break bad? All right, guys, we have a special one today. A teacher stepping up into the building to come and talk to us and tell us how much disrespect that teachers are in these days and age as far as the respect they don't get from their students and the respect that they don't get in their pay. But this particular teacher right here says it's not about to pay for her. It's all about the kids. No more wasting time. Let's get it. Hold on. Pretty dot plus dot petty in the building. So you're pretty. So, so you're pretty. Yes. Plus size. And yes. you're and you're petty like that. Yes, just I, a little bit. I, I don't well, understand. Why bit. why 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 you petty? What what you petty for? Like what's going on? It's what? fun. I don't I don't mean petty in the sense of being like tit for tat petty, just like mm. joking wise petty. Mm. Petty. So that means if, if that that means if somebody get with you and says something out the ordinary, you're gonna be petty about it. Mm. My mouth is slick. Oh my god! But I try not to get out of character. Mm. Okay, now everyone's not worth that energy. All right, now so we're gonna go in and uh, <laughs> we're gonna jump right into it. Um, this video right here. I really need someone to help me fully like understand this and make this make sense. Back in my day, they told us go to college, get your degree, and you will live the American dream. You'll have a house with the picket fence and dog and all the nice stuff. Um, as we grew older, they said, you know, if you want to do better than that, go get a master's degree. Knowing mm. that a lot of us don't have money just to pay for college up front. Because those who mm -mm. have money to pay for college up front don't necessarily go to college they just put it back into their family and their businesses and and expand but they mm. exploited the lower and medium income families and gave us student loans and debt and are pushing us to get this education to make less than you can make at a fast food restaurant teachers mm. in most counties in florida don't even start at fifty thousand dollars they don't start at wow. fifty thousand dollars they might start at forty eight, forty nine, but a GM at McDonald's will make sixty thousand just to start, get bonuses, insurance, car and phone allowance. With bonuses and stuff, they probably had a potential to make sixty five to seventy thousand dollars or more. Like, but you can't pay teachers sixty thousand. You can't pay teachers their worth, but McDonald's is starting their GMs off at sixty thousand a year. Like, we got it all messed up. And then we we got all this debt that we'll never be able to pay back. Because we're not in positions and careers that pay us enough to sustain a lifestyle to pay it back. And don't go saying, oh, you chose to be a teacher. Ain't nobody chose to make you choose to be a teacher. No, you didn't. But who going to teach your child? You ain't going to homeschool them. Somebody need to get Billy, Bobby, Joe, and Jane. Who who else gonna do it? Our our priorities and our our mindsets are are screwed. Sixty thousand, and a teacher can't even make fifty thousand starting. Starting like this is really ridiculous. Damn it, man. The GM at McDonald's starting at sixty k. Wow. Yep. And, and, and I you... went to the website mm -hmm. and looked up the requirements because people were in the um, comments debating me. Like, you have to go to the Mac University or you have to have a college degree. Hold on, somebody that. actually, wait, wait, somebody actually said <laughs> Mac University? Really? I'm, I'm, I'm paraphrasing. It was like Mar McDonald's has their own university. I call it the Mac University. Oh, my God. You know, you, oh, my God. <laughs> you mean to tell me Mac? <laughs> there's, a, there's a university for McDonald's to make hamburgers. Really? Yes, they say they have a like a a college or something like a program. Oh my god! They have god. their own school to study. That, but you don't have to have any of that to be a GM. That's a negative. I I I, I don't think I would. I, I don't think I would subject myself to go to Mac <laughs> University. <laughs> 
<laughs> so as, I don't know the real name of it. I just like the way that sounds. So as a teacher, uh, you you are a teacher. How long how long you been a teacher? Um, I have been a certified teacher since 2014. However, I've been teaching in the private sector since like 2007, 2008. Wow. And so. and you know this you and you know this for a fact that teachers don't get paid much. Yes, I've worked in two counties in Florida. Neither county starts off at um fifty thousand for first year teachers. Wow. And, and you know some teachers who have been teaching longer than that make less than the first year teachers. You know, that's this been a this been a theme throughout the years, uh, with teachers. Like, for example, you know, you get you you got you got people, you got young men that becoming like basketball stars, athletes and stuff like that. And they, you know, they jump into the profession making well over, you know, well over six figures while the teacher that they got taught by only makes 25K mm -hmm. or right. 30 right. for that matter. Right. That's crazy. Society and glamorizes. They glamorize uh, rappers and musicians and artists, but teachers who are often held to a higher standard in the public eye, like we can't do certain things on social media or out in the public for in fear, you know, seeing a parent or something like that, um, and we'll be in the, trouble. The, Bi but the Bible you thumpers. idolize. Yeah, you, they idolize athletes and allow them to do and say anything, but us, we're held to a higher standard, but then they talk about us. Someone called us glorified babysitters. You know, I saw that. I I I, I saw that somewhere that that uh, that they that they calling you guys glorified babysitters. And I would think that in these times that they doing it now because, I mean, the kids that you guys, the kids today, aren't like us back in the day, man. I mean, when we went Not to school. All. When we went to school as a kid, as a child, we was held to standards of the school. And if we got wrong, we got capital punishment. We had we had mm -hmm. the paddles. We had to go stand in the corner. You know, we I mean, the teachers had a little bit more power, you know, to 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 run their classroom than they do now. Like we got we yes, got videos. Now. We got videos of 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 teenagers like literally fighting the teachers mm -hmm. that's unheard of yeah. right that we're is... less respected now in the age of social media than we were before we are less respected um because for one kids know that we don't make money maybe not on my level because i teach first grade not in the elementary well kind of fourth and fifth day, the attitudes and things start showing up there, but they know there's not much you can do to them. There's not much. And with, in regards to the paddle and stuff, it's actually still not illegal in Florida. It's up to each district's discretion if they want to allow that to happen. Mm -hmm. But they are so afraid of the scrutiny that's going to come from the media and the community. And we've lost that village. That, that used to be a village. That so called that so called mama drama. Oh, you ain't going to pet on mm -hmm. my kid, but your kid was bad mm -hmm. though. Yep. You know, your, your kid your, doesn't your, listen. Yeah, you right. have kids who will destroy classrooms, and there is no repercussions. They will literally. I have seen kids throw chairs, throw crayons, throw everything in classrooms, like destroy the whole teacher's class, the teacher's whole classroom, and. They don't care because they know all you can do is tell them to pick it up and they're gonna call your mom. And, <laughs> and, no and, and that's and and that's no 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 service because even when they go home, they they they're not gonna get uh they're not gonna get service by their parents. I remember I remember when I did something wrong in school. I, I you know, I got a paddle, I got paddled in school and still got you know, punished by my moms at home. Right. Like it was a right. it was a double edged sword with me coming up. I I couldn't wait till I became a teenager and be like, yeah, man, mm -hmm. you, you can't do that to me no more. But but back then, the the respectability with the teachers was more was more so than it is now. Right. Right. It's, it's no respect to the profession. 
by the children, by the adults, or by the communities we serve. Because to be called a glorified babysitter is funny because when COVID hit, the kids were at home with their parents. And the parents couldn't do the work. They were tired mm. of the kids. Mm. The kids eating all their food. They tired of being home with their own children. But we're glorified babysitters. But mm. you can't do what's called the new math. Right. You don't know how to do new math. The, the math, and, um, the math was, ain't mathing. <laughs> yeah, the math ain't mathing. It, it ain't. It ain't mathing. You know, and somebody was like... um quit complaining or work at McDonald's. I'm job shaming. I'm not. What I'm, what I'm simply saying is as we were growing up, college set was like a, a, a great achievement. And it kind of set you apart right. in society. Like you're college educated. You get something with your life. But now that degree is kind of worthless because they used to shun you back in the day for saying, oh, you're going to work at McDonald's. You'll be bagging mm-hmm. groceries at Publix. But those mm-hmm. people making more than the teachers making. Mm. The garbage men making more than the teachers making. And you know, I'm not job shaming anyone. I'm just saying we have to do better for our educators. Now you know a what? GM at McDonald's doesn't need a, a high school diploma. No, they don't need a college degree. They, they just need to be eighteen. They none of none of these um I well, I, I wanna say medium paying jobs uh require uh any type of education i'm in the trucking industry i i've been uh i've been a truck driver for going on seven years uh before that you know i was uh i was i was an owner operator of my own company before that of course you know i was working in in different places here and there and all like that but i want to say as for the trucking industry because that's where everybody is getting on the bandwagon you know social media Mm -hmm. is over here telling people get your cdl you can make money get your cdl but you don't need you Mm -hmm. you don't need no kind of uh no you don't need a diploma you know this you don't need a diploma you don't and you don't need a uh master's or bachelor's degree you know just come in just just come in get your cdl and boom you automatically in a in a in an industry that you starting off at 40k but you can make an upwards of 100k with no with right. no educate with no with no education beyond 12th grade needed my son my my son just just graduated uh college with a bachelor's degree in i forgot what it what it what it was but he went to school you know i i was the one like coming up I I I was told, yeah, go to college, get the better job, get the white picket fence. But first, you got to go to college and get the better job, and then you'll get the white picket fence. Okay. Unfortunately, I didn't do that, but I passed that on to my son. Like, yeah, man, in order to get the better jobs out here, man, you you got to go to college. You got to do this. You got to do that. He went, and in 2020, he graduated. And now, I, you know, he, he looks at me like, bro, I could have did something else. <laughs> I was like, mm-hmm. you know what? I agree. I agree because a lot of kids that's in college that's not doing nothing with their degrees, 10% of them is in trucking right now. Paying, mm-hmm. paying that, that humongous college tuition back, student loans back. Right. So Mm -hmm. there's a lot of, or if they have their degree, they're not even working in their field. They're doing something totally different. Exactly. So many teachers last year, our school lost so many teachers in the school year, in the school year. So that glorified babysitter and saying, Oh, y'all have summers off. Now, when we were in school, we sat at our desk, we did our work. Now you have to tend to every child's learning style You have to make the lessons creative and engaging. You have to have centers. You have to have uh, push in, pull out groups, small group rotation. All of that. I have 19 kids in my class. You have to make sure the lessons are catered and tailored to their learning, different learning styles. If they're an auditory learner, if they're a visual learner, you have to do all of that. You have to create centers. We didn't have centers growing up. We sat down. The teacher taught at the board. We had our stuff on our desk, and that was it. Yeah. We have a thousand meetings. We are buying stuff with the money. They give us three hundred and one dollars every year to purchase things for our classroom. 
three hundred and one dollars. Three hundred and one. That's enough. Three hundred. That's enough to buy school supplies for your class. Shit. For the entire year, we get three hundred and one dollars. That's not that's not including the decorations. Like I have a copy what? machine in my room, right? In case I need copies on the fly, okay. I have a color printer in my room just in case I need anything because the school doesn't supply that. I buy construction paper. I buy paint. I buy different things for projects. Three hundred and one dollars. I buy snacks. I do all of that. Pretty. Let me ask you this you question. Know, let, let me let me let me ask you this hard question. And um, and don't get me wrong, and I'm not trying to be offensive or anything like that. But if if you're not making, you know, if if you're not if if you're not making that, why continue to be a teacher? Why why not go and and try to find something else that's, I guess, you. I, I don't know. I mean, why why not try I'm to find you, I'm going to tell you two stories. I'm going to tell you two stories because earlier in January this year, I struggled with finding my why. Like, what's my purpose? Why am I doing this? Where am I supposed to be, right? So I struggled with that. In May, I was in the hospital for 15 days. Now, mind you, I teach oh first God. grade. Um, and this was my first year. This is my second year at the school I'm at now. But during the year, I met some fifth grade girls. And I stopped them in the hall because they had mascara on their face. And I'm like, what are y'all doing wearing mascara at 10 years old? Throughout the school year, they came and saw me every morning. They did mascara checks. They checked in with me. How, how are y'all doing? How I'm doing? If I had food in my closet. When I went in the hospital, the teachers are texting me and saying, your girls are asking about you. What do we tell them? I say, just tell them, you know, I'm, you know, I'm in the hospital. We're working things out. Right. I got out of the hospital the day before school ended, and I drove straight from the hospital to the school. I pretended like I was still in the hospital. They had me on speakerphone, and I came out of the curtain, and the kids came running and crying to me. Mind you, I've never taught a single one of these kids. Okay. Just from my interaction with them throughout the year. Um, that's one thing. The second thing, on um, we had we were impacted by Hurricane Ian last month. Mm -hmm. We were out of school from September 26th, and because I work at a year-round school, my kids don't come back until November 1st. Wait, you talking about you, you, you talking about the major hurricane that just passed this year down there? Yes. Oh, you so hurricane? Yes. Oh, you from Florida? Yeah. I'm oh, from Florida. oh, okay, 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 okay. Go, go ahead, continue, continue. So I was kept in constant contact with my parents. We have an app called Remind. And I was like, hey, I want to get the kids together. We, at this point, we've been out of school for three weeks. They're not coming back until November 1st. So I was like, I want to get the kids together. I call around. And, of course, like all the parks are down. The hotel conference rooms are full because you have FP and all the other people here. So someone suggested McDonald's. And the video's on my page, too. So I contact McDonald's, and they tell me, yes, I can reserve the back half of the restaurant. I transform McDonald's into a Halloween party for my kids. Oh, that's and nice. We were there for hours, and it's the little things. Knowing that I touched someone's life or something I said or done to someone impacted their life, and they hold on to that. That's that's why there's no dollar amount you can put on that. Yes, Teachers. money is is nice, but money comes and goes. Teachers, but man. The impact, Teachers, yep. you you are the pinnacle. You you are the pinnacle of a teacher, man. I mean, I yo, I got to give it to you. You you are the pinnacle of a teacher because majority of the teachers that that take their job serious, they don't look at the money. They don't look at the aspect of it. They look at they look at the fact that look, I'm touching somebody. I'm 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 of value to these mm -hmm. students here, and and majority of the students gravitated to you so man shout out to you man without, without even being my you know and it, i go beyond that <laughs> you don't know how many kids i've taken home i've done hair i have bought clothes i've done so much because you know i didn't grow up with a silver spoon in my mouth or i wouldn't have all these college loans but i see me in these children children who come from single parent homes having been on food stamps and you know Sometimes you go home, mom and aunt there because mama working her second job. 
Now let me. I'm taking kids home. Let now spray their hair and everything. Let me stop you right there. Uh, 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 shout out to you for doing that, but you know, in these day and age, you know, kind of like taking kids home is like a touchy thing. Yes, I got first graders. First uh, graders in elementary school. So uh, I'm not taking no high schoolers home. Okay. Let me give that disclaimer. I am not taking high school kids home. I'm taking uh, kids. These are all elementary age kids, no more than 10 years old. Um, and I have their parents permission. Okay. And I go, or I go to their house and braid their hair. Okay. Because, you know, some people, you know, some people was, will look at that as, you know, kind of weird. No, or no, stuff no. like that. These are little so. kids. But, you know, it's crazy that we look at it as weird, but instead of just under and seeing the true value of it, the pureness of it, you're helping somebody. You got kids who come to school with their hair looking a mess. How how do you feel? If I, I I keep a brush, some hair stuff in my classroom. So when they come in and they need their hair combed in the morning, come over here. Let me let me get you looking right before school. And I'm the only black teacher at my school. So this none is a of the, predominantly white school. So none of the None of the parents ain't ain't coming up coming up there to you with no foolery talking about well why are you combing my kid's hair if I if I send my kid to school with his hair all messed up you know, I don't want you to I don't want you to mess with it you you didn't encounter uh any 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 re, uh residuals from that no no I get thanks parents will see me in the store without their kids and speak to me because they know who I am. Never had that kid in my class. One parent, I was in Walmart. She was like, there goes my favorite teacher. Never had her daughter in my class. She was like, every time I see you, I know you're my favorite teacher because you're just so warm and inviting and welcoming. I braided a little girl here last week here, and her mama takes me, thank you so much. She loves it. I love it. They appreciate those things because as parents, think about it. We don't have time to do all the things that we need to do all the time. Something always gets forgotten. Man, and you're, hair you're good, you're and good comparison teacher. and cleaning the house is something is something different. You, you're yeah. a good oh, teacher. Oh, one more thing man. I did That's this crazy. year. Being yeah. the only black teacher at this in in the second black in like fifty years. The last black teacher was in the seventies when we had a black para and there's a black lady in the cafeteria. Um I put on um cultural programs. Last year I put on a Hispanic Heritage Living History Museum. And in February I had a band come from Miami, marching band come from Miami. Each one of my students memorized lines and portrayed a person in African-American history for Black History Month. And I had a marching band. I raised the money for a marching band to come. Got donations from different restaurants and things to feed the kids. And the kids um, were crying because they were so impacted in the value of having it and they've never seen it before. And I, I just wrote a play called King Sorella. That we were supposed to do um, this month, but since the hurricane hit, we're going to do it in November. But it's a Cinderella story inspired by Hispanic heritage with the King Senyeta. Okay. And I'm putting that play on, too. All right. Now, now being out, born and raised in Florida? Yes, yeah, so originally from Miami-Dade County. I grew up in Homestead. And oh. now I live on the West Coast in a small town called Punta Gorda. Okay, okay, that's what's up. My, well, Florida is one of my routes, so yeah, I I come down to Florida. Not a fan of Florida. I'm just saying. <laughs> I mean, ninety nine ninety ninety five is like one way in, one way out. <laughs> you know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, you on the other side. You on the West Coast, <laughs> East Coast. I mean, yeah, you on the East Coast. Yeah, you know, one way in, one way out. But uh, but. Uh, the the hurricane, since you know you mentioned it, you know it was a major hurricane, you know, uh, a while mm -hmm. back. How how did that how did that impact you? Well, you already mentioned how it impacted the school, but how did it impact you personally? Um, we didn't have much damage. Um, we had some water coming through the roof and through the walls, but um, thankfully, you know, we didn't sustain major damage. I was able to get power back the next day. Um, but for my students, I kept in contact with them and I had some kids come over and shower at my house. Um, them and their parents, they came and shower. I cooked for one family. Um, and I went and handed out donations like blankets, food, uh, clothes, toiletries to fa different families from the school. Damn so thankfully man. I was fortunate enough and we didn't sustain a lot of damage. And I'm a single mom. I have twin 12-year-olds. But, I, you know, 
I try to teach them the emphasis on giving and giving back and caring for others. Well, you, you that teacher, man, again, God damn it, <laughs> man. Like, uh, you, why, why are you not the head teacher? Like, why, why, why aren't you? I, I know you said, I, I know you said money is not a factor, but bro, you, you should. The you, lead teacher does gets paid the same amount as I get paid. It's not an increase in pay. No, nah, you should you should get paid more. You do more. You you there. You are more. You the teacher. Like you 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 should you you should get paid more. For real. <sighs> well, I well, just enjoy. It. I love what I'm doing. Well, pretty pl dot plus dot petty. <laughs> Thank you very much, very, very much for sharing your uh, story and uh, coming and chopping it up with me on the Lockout Men podcast show. I really do appreciate you. Thank you for having me. I'm I'm grateful for the opportunity and thank my you for reaching out to me. My pleasure. I mean, I I really enjoyed this conversation. I wow, yeah, yeah, Florida, y'all should give this woman more money. I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm just saying, y'all, y'all should. 60, 65. Yeah, I'll be yeah, all right. yeah, yeah. <laughs> get get her to the same amount as a general manager at McDonald's, man. Without going to the university, I'm just saying. Refuse to go to a <laughs> McDonald's university to make a burger. Come on now, I know how to make a burger at the house. <laughs> <laughs> it may not have that special sauce on it like McDonald's or the sesame seed Sh buns. Now, come no. on. <laughs> we, we, could go, man, we could go to Kroger and get a sesame seed bun. <laughs> and <laughs> and toast it. Like, <laughs> like back in the day, like, you know, like back in the day, that would have been, you know, that would have been such a secret. But yeah, we got the mm -hmm. internet. We got the internet now. We can we can see what ingredients y'all put on your burgers. Big cheese got it locked. Boy, 